looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and you are tuning in on Labor Day, Labor Day weekend, Labor Day Monday. And we have chosen a very, I, I think, a rather fitting topic and guest for specifically today, because today and this time of the month, this is where um, some people are really feeling like, Ooh, how was my summer? How, did I do what I wanted to do? Was I able to do what I wanted to do? Because we have been asking the question, what have you or have you been pursuing during this pandemic? Like, and when I say pursuing, you know what? Our our guest today has, has a twist to this. And I, I'm so happy. She's going to be really uplifting our spirits. I can tell you that. Because what comes to mind are the three Ps. People, places, and th- Oh, that is not three Ps at all. My goodness, guys. <laughs> It's a PPT, people, places, and things. And that's what we are here asking about. Have you been pursuing? Have you been following and going after something that you've always want to see, experience, or do? And so I am so happy to be bringing on one of my good friends, my previous guest, my uh, co-author, an author herself, Suzanne Lavoie Salmon. And so first of all, let me welcome you, Suzanne. Hello. Hi, Lisa. I am so excited to be here. (laughs) We love having you as a guest. You are always talking about things that you're passionate about, but you're, you're sharing them, not just for yourself. You're sharing them because you love when other people are happy and learning and growing and connecting. (laughs) Absolutely. Definitely. And so here, as I, I'm going to introduce you so that everybody can really feel why do you do this? And maybe they want to do it too, because I want to tell the listeners right now, you want to hang around for this entire show because what Suzanne's going to be sharing actually can affect your life, can bring up, bring, you know, lift your life. And she's going to give some really good pointers and tips and directions and suggestions on things that you can easily do to really, you know, open your heart up and follow your dreams. So, Suzanne Lavoie Salmon is a seasoned writer and traveler filled with a huge zest for her craft and life. She has served in multiple diverse industries, but her passion is for hospitality and tourism. Yay, tourism! (laughs) Suzanne launched her first solo book, Night Shift, in 2017, and the first of a fiction series, which was inspired by her own personal and professional experiences in hospitality. The setting takes place in Suzanne's favorite travel destination, Lake George, in upstate New York. Additional literary achievements include being a contributing chapter author for three compilations, including Unsung Heroes, Deconstructing Suicide Through Stories of Triumph, and What Self-Love Got to Do With It, and Your Shift Matters. Hey, there's four there. Resistance to Resilience. Suzanne has also contributed articles as guest blogger for multiple digital magazines and websites, especially for travel and tourism. Suzanne serves in both traditional and freelance sectors. She continually volunteers in her community and virtually supports small businesses, especially within that travel and tourism industry, which we're going to be really talking about, as you guys can tell. (laughs) She shares and promotes them on her social media platform, particularly throughout this pandemic. She has been a public speaker at various venues, both in person and online. And Suzanne's passion and love for hospitality and tourism has called her to create her own online venture, which will be launched in the early fall of 2020, which is right now, Suzanne. That's so exciting. (laughs) Oh, I know. It's a dream come true. It really is. Yes. And that's where it all came from when we started talking about this and you were sharing like, oh, Lisa, you know, I'm launching this thing and and it is a dream come true. And that's where we came up with what are you pursuing this pandemic? And let me just ask first question. Earlier, earlier this year, you know, March, April, May, were, was your heart kind of saddened? Like, oh my gosh, I love tours and travel. Like, how, how can I pursue my dream of even just traveling during this time? 
<clears throat> yeah, when when the pandemic hit and like especially just restaurants and attractions and so much within the the industry was just literally like hit with a wrecking ball. It, it was it was so sad for me because, in fact, it, it impacted me in, in multiple ways because I also was working within the industry and a lot had shut down at the time. So I, I I just was thinking and praying about, like, is there anything that I could do to to help out and everything? And, and, and it's amazing, too, because I was just looking through a journal – that I had started keeping around that time, and I kept adding to it and adding to it. And so much of it was about how can I help within the travel and tourism industry. So I I started looking at my social media, my Facebook, and I realized that there were just so many places like restaurants that were willing to step out and start doing curbside pickup or delivery, I mean, really branching out and looking for ways to think outside the box. And I had this idea, a light bulb moment hit me one day about, well, why don't you start writing and sharing about these places on your social media? And I'd already had a a following because in the past I would, I'm like a virtual tour guide on my Facebook <laughs> and I would let people know about you know, the different places and um, events, attractions, all kinds of activities to do. And I really upped it up uh, or um, upped it to a level where I, I was sharing literally every single day about so many places within the area. So, and and now it's led to what I'm going to be doing with the fall, but it, it, it really... It, it, and when it first happened, it was like, oh, man, what's going to happen now? Yes, I love that you were stepping up in the way of, like, you know, maybe, you know, in my world, I might say, oh, my gosh, this is happening. How can I support the animals, you know, who are, you know, being abandoned and this and that during this time. But I love that everybody has their own thing and you, your passion, your, you know, what you seem to, um, and you really recognize it like, wow, I was journaling about this and, and I was really looking at my Facebook as, you know what our Facebook pages are kind of like our posts that we do are kind of like our journal, aren't they? And they, yeah. and they were, and they highlighted to you. I love that you, you looked back and recognized like, wow, I'm, I'm doing this every day and it's helping people to connect to something to do. Um, Suzanne, when you were little, did, like, I want to see if this goes back to your childhood is reading the newspaper or what's going on in your city, something that you would do regularly anyways. Definitely. And I was raised in, with, with a family who just, I mean, we didn't have a, a huge budget growing up, but I mean, my parents always found so many fun activities for me and my sibling to do. And I was exposed to an early age about going to zoos and going to museums and music was a huge part of my life. And we went to parks mm -hmm. and I just really grew to have a love of of the simplistic and then also we would go on vacations like Lake George was a big one when I was six years old yeah. that that's where my love of Lake George started and then also my grandmother was a huge traveler my mother was a flight attendant so I was born into oh. the wanderlust of you know like you know, just that atmosphere. And yes, I, I always would look for fun things to do. I, I was creative and I loved being around nature and animals. And so, yes, I, I it just was a big part of my life just from an early age. You know what? Thank you so much for sharing. I was going to ask you why it is just because you happen to live near Lake George, but I love that you said that you specifically said, you know, it started when I was six, I fell in love with this experience and that environment reminds you of, you know what I mean? Like, uh, can you just speak more? Because I think a lot of people need to be reminded right now of what they might have really fallen in love with or started liking when they were little. Like, what, what, what is it about the memories? Is it people, a connection, food that yet like a special, I don't know. What was that about Lake George that really got into your heart? I loved the, the mountains. They were the, the thing that stood out to me, even like as a little kid, when we and even to this day, when we drive up on the main road, which is Canada Street, which goes right through oh. the village, and when we first see those mountains on the lake, and we always say, like, we're home. I mean, even though 
I live in New Jersey. When we get there, I mean, we're like we're home. I mean, it just really feels that way. And also, too, like we always stayed near the village, which if you get a motel or a hotel, which is right in Lake George Village, you don't even really need a car because they have oh. everything that's right there. And we would mini golf. In fact, they still have some of the golf courses there oh. that we had played at as a kid. And then uh, some of the restaurants are still there. And I mean, the food there. I, I mean, I have to say this because it's a funny story, but I live not too far from the Jersey Shore. Some of the best seafood that we have ever eaten was in Lake George, in New York. <laughs> and uh, it, I mean, it's just incredible. And the people there are so nice. They, they are welcoming. And we stayed at a particular motel in the village for years and years and years and really got to know the family. And they retired a few years ago, but we still keep in touch with them. And it's a place where there's something for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're six or if you're 96. There is always something to do up there and every season of the year. I mean, of course, summer is the biggest season, but fall coming up is one of my favorite times to go to. And, and even in the winter, yes, there are like a lot of holiday activities and there's a big winter carnival in February. And then in spring, that's when things start to begin. But it, it's just such a place of serenity. And it's my go-to place when I've been going through some challenges in my life. And anytime I go up to Lake George, I, I feel like I heal there. I feel better physically. Mm -hmm. I feel better emotionally. And I feel close to God when I'm there. And of course, with so much of our family vacations were there. And I've lost family members over the years, including my dad. And But I, we always just feel their presence when we go because it was just such a special time in our lives any time that we went there. You know, you, Suzanne, that was it, it, like I could feel like there's that joy coming from you. And this is when um, I really want to have um, you share with the listeners right there. I really heard that go traveling and opening up to new experiences or going back to the same place, but having a connection with it and then diving into deeper or having memories, you experience healing, you experience feeling a, a place of safety and comfort and being home. You experience um, great food and, and connections and family and friendships. And in, in all of that, you know, as light on living's tagline is giving you reasons to feel better. Like this is why people tune in. I love that you are talking about one area that you've been to multiple times, repeated. And once you get there, I love that you shared that you don't even need a car because you are, again, you know, helping us to see that we don't need a lot of money. We might be on a restricted budget or just a low budget. And it, mini golf, I mean, you're just walking around having fun and doing your thing and it's a couple bucks to play a game. When, when the listeners are hearing this, um, wh what do you think, why, why is it so important that people make sure that they keep any level of tourism in their their life, no matter what. Tourism, it it gives you so many different perspectives, and it it, mm. it gives you so many connections and a way to experience the world that you're just not going to get if you stay in one place and. Like, I, I just love that even though Lake George is my go-to place, I mean, I've been to many different places. I've been overseas also, but I just, I think what it is, too, with, like, where I live, it's mainly, you know, a, a beach resort area, which is great. I love the ocean and everything, but a place like Lake George and even in upstate New York, it, it allows you to experience events and activities that you may not be able to get wherever it is that, that you're living. I've, I've been able to do whitewater rafting and parasailing and, and hiking and um, going into um, historical forts and just so many activities. And now they have this um, new one called Revolution Rail, where you literally are mm -hmm. sitting on, it's almost like a, a bike contraption. It's new. I'm, I can't wait to try it, but you sit <laughs> on this um, contraption with wheels and you're on a railroad track and you're going over the Hudson River. I, I mean, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And it's, uh, and I mean, these are the kind of activities that are out there. And, and I mean, it's just wonderful 
to be out in nature because going through this pandemic, I mean, so much has been changed, uprooted, com- just completely changed around. I mean, it, it's done so much. I mean, being out in nature where things just are, are so much bigger than we are, and I mean, it reminds us, too, that no matter what, like, nature's there, I mean, the mountains are there, I mean, even just now, like, I'm noticing the acorns are falling, the leaves are turning colors, no matter what happens in our personal lives, that there are just some things that are always going to be there for us, and, and travel allows you to experience those things that are going to be there to enrich your life, even when your own has been totally turned upside down. You know, I just, we have still have a minute before commercial. I'd love for you to answer this because you mentioned perspective and the experience. Do what, what is it? Do you think it's that much more intense to be able to experience it versus watching it on TV? Like if I pulled up Lake George on TV and I experienced it or I went there, what is the biggest difference to you about being there? I mean, definitely. Yes. Seeing it is one thing, but when you're actually there, it, it's, the perspective, again, just being by the mountains and seeing them and, and just uh, taking in all of the sights and, and the smells and and just being there in that environment and knowing that just being around something, again, that is so grand and majestic and especially, I mean, there's nothing like the foliage in Lake George on those mountains. I, I mean, the colors are absolutely brilliant and um and if it's okay to just mention this here that the second book in my series that i'm writing is a fall theme and it's it's amazing because i mention about how grand those mountains are and you're not going to really experience that full that that full perspective of that view that majestic view unless you're physically there you can see it on tv or even in a magazine but when you're right in front of it it, it, it it's just absolutely incredible. It heals you in a way that nothing else could. Hmm. Well, you know what, Suzanne, we're going to sneak away to commercials, but listeners, when we come back, we will really talk about the importance of actually pursuing and getting to that, that goal, that dream, and really what the presence of that feels like and how you can get it too. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hi, this is David Strickle. I'm excited to share my brand new show, The Stream of David Live, right here on Ohm Times Radio. Each week, I'll have exciting guests, and I'll channel the eternal wisdom of the stream, a group of non-physical entities whose teachings have transformed lives all over the world. So join us for an uplifting hour each Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. That's the Stream of David Live right here on Ohm Times Radio. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and we have Suzanne LaVoy Salmon here with us today. And there's one thing we absolutely do not want to distance ourselves from, and that is pursuing our passions. And Suzanne, being travel and tourism, um, hospitality, but there's also one thing I really hear when you speak about all these things is 
the amount of time that we have on this planet is is that time, short or long, whatever it is. But there is a lot of pain if we don't pursue what our passions are. And you've been on both sides of this, you know, before. And so I would love for you to speak to me about, share with the listeners, like, you love tra- tourism and, t- and travel and, and the hospitality, but you're now stepping up. You're, uh, yeah, you're up leveling into making this, you know, a career move for yourself. What does that feel like? Can you talk about the pain that you were missing from not before and now the joy that it's bringing? Definitely. It, this has been what my mom would call a circuitous route. And I, I will always be grateful for all of the experiences that I've had prior to this, because to me, it, it's just everything has it's enabled me to get to this point in my life. And, but prior to the pandemic, I, there were things that, that I was taking on in my life that even though they were fulfilling to a point and I I enjoyed doing them, there there was just something missing. And it just always felt like there was something that something wasn't aligning with everything that I was doing. And it it took, literally took everything being shut down in my life to just really dig down deep. And I realized that like, I had worked in hospitality for 13 years, and I, I worked in a um, beachfront motel for th- um, 13 years, mainly working the front desk, which I did others, but I loved just being around people and, and sharing travel and but I, I, I and I knew that at some point there was something deep shore and I, it was more should I do something traditional or what should I do and then I got away from it for a little bit um, life had happened life happened to me and, and a lot of, of just my life went in directions that I wasn't expecting at all and and again, I just felt like this inner, just this inner calling in me to. Do I wasn't sure what that was, and then when I started sharing and promoting and doing all that I was doing for the restaurants and the hospitality tourism industry around March or April, it was like the, the heavens opened up for me, and mm. it. I realized what was missing from my life. It's that I, this is what I'm born to do. Like, this is what my mission is. It's not, I don't even, like, I don't call it a job. I, I don't call it anything except it's my calling. It's it's my mission. It's my why. Like, it, it gets me so excited to, oh, I wake up in the morning and I, and I, like, even this morning, like, our indoor dining um, opened up, you know, to a 20 24- capacity indoors, but most restaurants are still going to be doing outdoor and their curbside and delivery, but there's just such an excitement in the air, and I mean, I could feel it even just looking at the, the, the promotions, and I realized that I had a, hand, a big hand in, in keeping and helping to keep these places going because people would reach out to me privately or even if I saw them out in the community and they're like, thank you so much for letting us know that places were open, that these were available because we wouldn't have known. So, I, I, and, and this is what is leading me to do as I'm moving into my new venture. Like, this is what I'm born to do. It's my passion. And it, there is a pain, an inner pain inside. When, and, it, and it can be physical, too, because... When you're not doing what you're born to do and what you're really passionate about, it can lead to a physical pain because you you feel like you're missing out on something. And for a while there, I was. I just didn't know what it was, and now I know what it is. Like I I was missing being in the in the thick of it, and I absolutely love it. And so I would encourage anyone that if you feel like there is something missing in your life or you're doing something that just doesn't align or that you're passionate about, explore it. Go out and explore it. And that lines in with my travel and tourism because sometimes we have to do our own inner tourism, our own inner traveling Ooh. to see what it is and discover 
what is it? Yeah. Like, what is our destination? What is it that we're meant to do and, and make a true calling and mission out of? That is absolutely beautiful. I love that inner exploring. First of all, what a great way to say your, your inner, your inner tourism. Um, that is, you know, I think that sometimes um, I'll look back at some travel and I'll think, you know, had I not gone there, had I not seen this, have I not experienced that taste of this, hurt, you know, all those senses that become alive, um, you'll all, people can either start recognizing a pattern that they're drawn to. Like when I went to Japan, I noticed that I was still, you know, attracted to the same. There's certain things I'm like, wow, I even like that over here or, or wow, I was doing something every day, you know, in my own, you know, country, Canada. But then when I came to Japan or something, then I, I didn't really do it. I didn't miss it. So I'm like, wow, maybe that's just a habit. Maybe, maybe that's actually not mine. So we start, we start finding out who we are, don't we? As we, as we gain experiences and travel. Definitely. It, it it just enhances and it builds you up in a, in a way that I feel nothing else can because you're not only having, like, you're not just doing the activity, but you're increasing an experience. You're increasing your knowledge okay. of something. You're, you're, you're increasing a connection. You're finding out about something out there that maybe you would never experience. You may be tasting a food that you've never tried before. It, it's, it's just something that is really causing you to just keep building and growing. And to me, again, it, it's the best education that's out there because mm-hmm. it just allows you to experience life on every every huge epic level that, that there is. And it, and it's interesting, too, because um, this past week um, there was a significant loss um, with a very good friend of mine, with, and um, it, it, it really just brought everything back. And he, he was young. He was in his mid-40s. And, um, you know, my mom and I always say that it's not, it just isn't worth it to put things off because like you were mentioning earlier about we don't know how long we are going to be on this earth. It could be, it, we just don't know. And I mean, I've spent so much of my life going after things and doing things. And my life has at times looked unconventional to people, but honestly, like I, I just feel like I have lived such an incre- you know, an amazing life because I've experienced so much. I talk to people sometimes that have never been to a baseball game or gone to a museum or like I I guess at times like I realize I take for granted sometimes all of the experiences that I I do have and that I've taken and I encourage people like don't wait for retirement. Don't wait for a time that may never come. Like now's the time to do it because I'm finding out things that I did years ago aren't even around anymore. And I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to experience them. And that's something too, that I highly encourage people to do. There's something to do. You really want it. It will, you know, just, Keep believing it, envisioning it, and it will happen. Take advantage of it because we just don't know what's going to be around in the future. Yes, it's no longer just about us being around. It's the possibility of going. I remember when I was a little girl, I think I was in grade five or something like that. So maybe you're 10 or whatever you are then. Um, and I went to a planetarium. And mm-hmm. wow, I still, oh my gosh, like I really, t- it was the most magical thing and it's, and it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, maybe there is other, you know, around the world, there's a few of them, but, um, I'm, I would never have thought, you know, being a youngster, you know, thinking, oh yeah, this is not going to exist later on. So I can't come back, but to really, I love that you expressed gratitude there. Like, so even what you, some people might consider really insignificant, like going to a ball game and other people like I've never been. So just acknowledging that. And just, I want to speak to the point that you said, increasing connection. That was so key right there because right now we're not feeling that connected. We're trying to find ways to feel connected. And what can you just speak to what the difference would be, how you could explain it? Um, what is the difference to you between the connection between people and the connection between an experience? Like the, the, the depths of the feeling or how does that impact somebody when they have a connection to an experience? Well, b- both – both definitely contribute to our mental well-being, but I feel with an experience because, of course, with people being human, they're 
we, we do allow ourselves to, we open ourselves up to having disappointments or we have an expectation and mm-hmm. it may not come to pass. And there's always that, that risk, you know, when you're vulnerable with having the connections with people. But I mean, of course, I'm highly encouraging them. But with the experience, like mm-hmm. I know when I you use the example like going to Lake George, like I know like there's a particular place that I love to go there um, called um, it's Shepherd's Park. It's this gorgeous park that's right in front of the lake and has a view of the mountains. And there's tons of Adirondack chairs you can sit in. And it, it's just that when you when you go there, I mean, the, the mountains are there that they encourage you. Like you have the expectation that they're not going to leave. They're they're comforting and when you're there like it's just so much more than I mean you can have a conversation with someone but then when you have an experience it it opens up to even a deeper connection because you could be in around a, a group of people or you could hear something that maybe you never knew before. I mean, that that's happened sometimes. Like when my mom and I have gone out to a restaurant, like we'll hear a, over here uh, somebody at the table next to us, and they'll say something, and we look at each other like, "Wow, we didn't know that." <laughs> so, um, so sometimes, like when you know, some if you have like a one-on-one conversation, or maybe even like a small group, like that's good. But then when you have an experience, like if you go on a bus trip. Or if you go on a cruise, which I know right now we're, we're not able to do, but I just in the past when we've gone on trips like that, what we've shared, like we'll sit at a table with people and we're sharing about all kinds of experiences. And so you, it, it, it's the best of both worlds. You aren't limiting yourself by just having the personal connection, you're having that experience connection, and you're allowing yourself to discover what else is out there. I always say this is a huge, huge world, and it's so worth just getting out of where we're living or even, like, our own state. I've done half of the United States, and I'm planning to see the other half. You know, it's (laughs) it's a big goal of mine. But it's – I I, I guess it's just that when you travel – and when you have that experience, it, it just really grows you in, in ways that nothing else could. You know, thank you for sharing that because that's, that's very passionate. And that's what we're trying to do is ignite the passion and, and remind people of like, just sit down and think about what, what are you, what were you pursuing? What are you pursuing? And one thing I just got out of that was about being present. And it feels like when we go on day trips, week trips, holidays, vacation, tour, you know, we turn around, we are actually more present because we're, we're learning something new. We, we're not going on autopilot where our senses are all like, Ooh, got to watch out for the, Oh, don't trip or fall off that or oh we got to go this direction not that so mm-hmm. it actually puts us in a more present state whereas not not just be you know hum and drum but when we're sitting at home we're worrying we're worrying about the the future we're concerned we're sad about the past what it used to look like and so by getting out and just even going like you said for a walk to see the trees and the leaves or the mountains it, or the water all of these things it actually puts us in the present where we can be, we're pursuing presence. We're being present. Yeah. And that's a very healing state. I love that you said healing. Um, and on that healing note, what, what kind of healing, like, is it mental, emotional, physical? What kind of healing have you experienced along travels? For me, it, it's been everything. I, I noticed that when I go around the mountains, like I'm an asthmatic. So my allergies and my breathing, it's, it's very tough around, I don't, it it could be just the area that I'm in, but my allergies are always bad around where I live. However, any time that I go up to Lake George, I I don't have the allergy issues and my breathing is so much better. And I think it's just that because the air is not as impacted by congestion and my area, of course, we, it's smaller. We have a lot of cars, we have a lot of traffic and, so, like, where whenever I go up there, like, my breathing is just so much better. My thinking is, is clearer. And, it, again, I think it, it's just that they're so it's so vast. And, I mean, it, it, the expanse up there is wonderful. And just being by the water, like, water has always been a, a, a source of healing and comfort for me. And if I go by the lake and I'm listening to the ripples and 
I'm just seeing mm-hmm. the calm. It calms me down. It, it really does. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm having a a challenging day or something, all I have to do is just like look at the lake and just hearing it and the calmness of it, and it, it's just so beautiful. And it does make me feel better mentally, and then I feel better physically. And so, yes, it it, it really it it does it. And I can say that for so many different places that I've been, just being around a certain, you know, like a uh, you know a farm or something in nature. Like even when I whitewater rafted, just going over those rapids on on the river, it. It really does. It really does heal you because, again, it's that something being around, being in the present, experiencing everything in that moment. You're not thinking about the past. You're not thinking about the future. It allows you to stay grounded, and you don't feel like you're not feeling guilty that, oh, like when you're on a whitewater raft, you're not thinking about, oh, what, what do I need to go to the grocery store for? I mean, you, you, you have to concentrate <laughs> and know that, you know, you have other team members in that raft that are looking, depending on you, to all do the right thing. So, and, and that yeah. too, like it, it, it can help, like, also, like you said about staying in the present, but it also gives you that feeling that, yes, you are part of a team, you're part of something so much bigger and if you just allow yourself to to really just go into it and not be worried about this or worried about that and and be willing to be part of something else and and that's what travel and tourism is all about it really is do you know what you know we are going to sneak away to commercial but i want to let people know to come back because guess what we're asking suzanne when we come back how to how do we start planning that to like if we want that presence and we want that connection we want the experience where the heck do we start with our questions so come on back and suzanne's gonna help us <laughs> The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, lightworkers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. So I'm a cat and I just moved in with this new human and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week she asked it for Chinese and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. We're back, Light on Living, and it is about living. So we're talking about pursuing passions, pursuing, like, what are we pursuing during this pandemic? And this is about living, right, Suzanne? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So, okay, I've got a question. So, okay, I'm going to ask, I never ask negative questions, but I'm going to do it just this one time. Do you foresee us... 
Ah, I don't even want to ask that way. Let me think of a good way. Because I'm, you know what it is, is that people are asking, what if we get shut down again and we can't travel and we can't, you know, go out and eat on the patio? We can't, you know, visit, you know, Lake George. Um, Do you think there's still a way to travel and enjoy this if that happens again? Absolutely. I've been there myself many times, and and even now, like, as things are really opening up around our area, there's always that initial concern about, well, what if it shuts down again? But I I have to share that from just from a personal perspective that I always – one of my favorite – one of my favorite mantras is like this too shall pass and Mm -hmm. there's always an end to something and and even if god forbid something does shut down it will come back again and and in in a lot of ways it comes back better and bigger than anything we we could have imagined and and i'm just looking at how because i follow the trends of travel and tourism all the time now um even bigger and deeper ways and a lot of them are doing things that they never did before in their lives and even with the restaurants they're they're just so innovative and and thinking outside the box and and delving into areas that they never thought about like for example there's a wonderful amazing bed and breakfast tea room by me and the owner there has just gone above and beyond like she started a farm stand she did outdoor dining right away she was just doing so much and now it's like now that she's able to reopen to a point she's still going to continue these you know weather permitting but it's like there's always a way if you truly want something to work out it, there's always a way of doing it. It may not be the way that we initially wanted it, or even if it gets shut down. Because my my life was shut down for almost two years to something very, very detrimental that happened in my life. And thank God it did come to an end. But it took a lot of perseverance. It took a lot of being resourceful, and it, it took a lot of patience. But it also allowed me to... To, again, to think about, like, what is it that I really wanted to do with my life? So, I mean, eventually anything that does get shut down temporarily, it will come back to life again. It may not look the same, it, and, and there may be a, some loss, but there will be something that will be available. Like, I do believe there are going to be cruises again. I do believe that bus come back again. Like, I, I, there's going to be – it may not look the same, but, again, it, it – probably will be even better than the way it was before because now with this pandemic it's allowing us to look at okay we need to think about this we what can we do to make this experience even better for people and that's what i'm seeing too like i've seen a resurgence of like when we go into places people are saying hello again i mean you mm-hmm. know sometimes like prior to to covid i would go in a place and you weren't always acknowledged right away. Now you go in and people are there like, oh, how are you doing? It's great to see you. So I see the mm-hmm. gratitude really coming out and, and people are, businesses are just out there like, oh, we're, we're so grateful for the support and thank you for being there for us. And so it, it's just, I, I think it's really showing people that when something like this happens, it does foster that gratitude in an in, very pivotal way and then it also just uh, it it really makes us look at our lives like okay what is it that we can do where we're the best for ourselves and for other people and how can we go above and beyond and and help people feel like how can we help them to have the best experience and and i just see that going so if we do have another shut down it, it's temporary and again it'll allow for okay what can we do for the next time so th- th- there's just again like th- there will be a resurgence of the travel and tourism industry but it's going to look different but i believe in my heart based on what i've been saying already that it, it's going to be so exciting and so epic and we're going to see things never were attempted before That was so optimistic and hopeful and, and, oh my gosh, so passionate there. I love that belief and I love that, um, two things, 
hey, it gives us a clean slate. What can we do better? How can we make it more memorable? And I think I came up with a fun little line you can use. Let's put the hello in hospitality. <laughs> when you're saying, oh, hi there. Love it, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> Oh, yep, that's so definitely. fun. So, okay. So let's help some of the listeners out here. They're sitting back and going, all right, I'm open to connection. I want the experience. I want to get out there. Oh my gosh. I don't know where to start. <laughs> so like a lot of people would start with budget, I think first, or how long they can travel duration. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to walk through some steps with us. Like what are the questions that people are asking you on your Facebook page? And we'll share that so they can find you. And what are the things that you ask them to help them sort it out? Well, what I do, I always advocate for people to join or look at their local tourism sites, because especially on Facebook, I've gotten connected with so many different tourism sites, and either local or um, all around the country, and it's funny because every now and then I'll get something to pop up that has to do with a tourism event, and I'll encourage people to you know, definitely look at the sites, explore the sites. Um, the um, libraries now are open again. Um, parks. I, I try to really encourage people to, you know, look at some of these activities that maybe you never looked at before because, like, the library itself, they have tons of activities available. The park systems, they have classes. There's uh, and, of course, you know, with the social distancing and everything in mind, but um, there's drive-in movies. So I would tell people, like, use your – if you're on social media, definitely, like, just put in a keyword, like event or tourism or local events, and it, it's amazing what pops up. And and also, too, like, there's tons of event sites. And But I would say, too, like, connect. There's sometimes there, there are groups in – your area that are also um there's travel groups there could be uh there's also um a chamber of commerce around um, a tourism department so th- there's a lot of different areas that you can explore you could get I, I encourage people to to get on a mailing list for they can get a um uh, like a periodical or a magazine sent to them but a lot of times it's like people will ask about all their activities for uh, young children, and that's another yeah. reason, too, that I highly, highly um, promote Lake George because they have something for everyone. I mean, there are areas at times that we travel to that may not be as kid-friendly or maybe even not as budget-friendly, but that's what I love about Lake George is that it's for every budget, for every kind of family situation. I mean, you could go as a single person. You could go with – you know, a, a big family. I mean, you go as a couple. It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's just something for everyone, and that's why I love it. But, but I tell people, like, just be willing to explore, be willing to do your research, get connected with either a chamber of commerce or a local tourism area. Get on mailing lists, get on the websites, and and sign up because it's just amazing. Like, what what shows they- up. Uh, if, if they're if they're trying to have an experience like a new experience and stuff like some people are are drawn to well I love scuba diving so I'm going to go scuba diving or because they love scuba diving maybe they should go mountain hiking like do you suggest that people open themselves up to try not just the opposite but something different or to just you know heart's content just go do what you you always love doing and also to that question because it's exciting if you do have a family because there's a lot of family travel what if mm-hmm. you've got a whole bunch of different i this sally loves to read and george loves to ride his bicycle and mom loves to you know this bird watch and dad you know go to whatever so how how do we make it work to to get everybody to be able to pursue and, and have some some tourism in their lives it, so, and if you have um, the, the, those situations, which I've seen a lot, you know, where a lot of the family members are into different activities, I would highly recommend looking, and there's plenty of them around, like going to either like a resort or um, a dude ranch or somewhere where they have activities for everyone. And they have, I mean, the, oh, say the that again. budget Susan? is a little say, higher. What's repeat that, that again, because so, I'm not sure if you just cut off there. Can you repeat where you said to go to? Oh, um, either like a um, like a camping resort or like a uh, a dude ranch where they, 
like a a ranch of some kind where sometimes they'll have, like if you stay there for a week, they'll have the meals for you. They'll have tons of activities mm-hmm. and for everybody in there. And, and they're becoming more popular, too. Or even like a... Um, a lodge, there's a, or a ski resort, oh. even, and even if you're not skiing, I mean, there are places, or an indoor water park. That I, I would say, like, those are the areas that I'm looking at, or even people are getting into day trips with RVs, um, with traditional vehicles. So yes. truly, like, staying it initially may sound like a huge expense, staying at a ranch or, or a lodge or a resort, but then if you think about it, like, all your meals are included, all your – Activities are included, whereas you'd have to go out, you know, to different restaurants and paying for different meals, whereas you have everything there right for you. And and all you have to do, again, is just research each one. Most of the websites that I've been on, they outline everything that's available, and you can figure it out with your budget about whether it would be more or less. And But, again, it's – and, again, in New York, they have tons of them available and so I, I would just oh, and as far as the activities, I mean, because I there are certain ones that I'm then like with this Revolution Rail. I've never done that, and that just sounds so intriguing. And I believe you can. You don't have to do something so totally out of left field, but you can go out of your comfort zone, even with something that you love. I mean, like with water. Mm-hmm. I've done the whitewater rafting. I've done parasailing, and then I wanted. Now I want to go and do a um, a jet ski. I've never done that before, but I love water, so I'm going out of my comfort zone. But I'm still staying with what I love. So, and again, with yes. travel and tourism, it allows you to do that. It allows you to be adventurous, but not be in something that you're so totally uncomfortable about doing. So, it, it's just incredible. I love that. Okay, so now you must share with us, just as we begin to wrap up here, you do have a new venture. You're launching this um, the, in the fall. And what what can you share with us about that? That who, who, would you, who will you be inviting? Who should connect with you on Facebook or email you so that once you're launched, you're going to be able to help them? Who are you helping? I am going to be helping anyone that wants to experience travel and, and tourism and um, any way possible. I mean, I, I am just looking to promote and also just be there to help people have fun, enjoy life, be adventurous. And people who are looking for articles, you know, people who are looking for inspiration and just a way of, it, it's going to, I want people to be able to reach out and and really not just read a review of a place, but also, like, it, it being in a story, just really feeling, like, what the place is about or what the experience is about, like, getting that unique perspective and, and getting the just getting that real big focus of, like, wow, this is a place or a restaurant or an activity that I really like to do. So anybody who is looking for... To, to find out about what's out there and really getting a clear understanding of just how amazing it is. Um, they, they'd be the ones to connect. And anybody who also would love to, to you know, know how they can enhance their experience, because that's mm-hmm. something that, you know, I've also helped with, too. Like, what is it that, that maybe, like, my perspective could help enhance the tourism experience to, to go even farther than before? All right, so you're like a hot spot matchmaker for their heart. No, okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> there you go. Now, where can people connect with you the best? Is it email? Is it Facebook? Is it where? Where's our best place? Well, right now, um, the Facebook would be the, the biggest connection right now, which is under Suzanne Lavoie Salmon. And um, so, I, you know, definitely you can message me um, or send a friend request right now. I am going to be launching everything around, the, um, you know, probably most likely the end of September. That's what I'm planning for. And then I'll have more information about that. I don't have an email address right now that they can connect to, but it will be on there. And But right now, like, Facebook would be the best way to get in touch with me. And also I have um, 
uh, writer page, Suzanne Lavoy, which people can reach out to me as well. And I'll be updating on my Facebook regularly about when the launch is going to be and more juicy details with that. Okay, perfect. And actually, we'll have your your name and contact on the description page for this episode. And in my last final 30 seconds, just share with us how you believe and how you feel that travel and tourism is helpful for to someone's enlightenment path, on their enlightenment path. It brings you to a, a place where you can just really focus on on yourself, on your your creative sector inside, and, and just, it, it, I call it like being a, a creative archaeologist, and because it's allowing you to go out there and explore and discover treasures that are just all around you. And if you mm-hmm. go to, let's say, you decide to go on a hike, or if you want to go out on a kayak, it, it just, it, it allows you to just go out there be by yourself, be among nature. I mean, for me, I'm very spiritual, so it allows me to be close to God and it allows me to just have that present moment to be able to just be there and look at, like, what is it that I really want to do? Like, what is it that I really want to get out? And travel and tourism just, it, it does enlighten you and you just feel so amazing about being part of this earth and creation as a whole. That is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Suzanne Lavoie Salmon. We are all going to go follow our, our and pursue our passions. All right. Well, w- lovely to have you. We will talk to you soon. And everybody connect with Suzanne. <laughs> okay, bye, Suzanne. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye, everyone.